I see politics as ever since we grew grew up to get uh, grew up, um, it, we are already entering into politics. It's whether you want to call it that way. My first uh, encounter is really when it's my social, it's my own family background. Uh, girls are always discriminated. Yeah, so we don't get access to um, studies. is always a secondary. The boys must uh, study first. They have to go to the university first. So, um, and um, because I come from a very traditional family, so yeah, so everything that the girls do, they have to be actually um, done in a like either you support or you supplement. So when I went to UK, we have uh, actually a student movement already. Uh, which is called FIOMSO, is the Federation of uh, uh, UK and Air, yeah? Malaysian and Singaporean students. And that was the time where the FIOMSO itself got involved also in international politics uh, because we were having um, a lot of political um, changes yeah? in various countries like Indonesia, we have Marcos in uh, the Philippines and uh, we have the PLO um, and it has a very strong student movement in UK. That was how um, I got uh, really involved. Uh, particularly, we also came out from the, uh, th um, th uh, May 13 and we were entering into the new economic policy and we could see a lot of the um, the biasness within the implementation of NEP. So that started a lot of uh, students in, in uh, UK, um, Malaysian students and also Singaporean students, talking about um, our home and also what we can do. And that was also a time where we have the uh, Dakwa movement. I mean, uh, Kali Samad and uh, 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 quite a number of uh, people from uh, Ikram, they were all involved in the Dakwa movement and uh, we are more involved in the uh, student movement. Yeah? Um, so, so therefore, uh, that's how it started. La. Then of course, uh, women's rights has always uh, been very close to my heart and we actually formed a group and we came up with a cartoon book on, um, on the women's rights issues. I think that you know the involvement in uh, Berse and also the uh, women's movement. We have tried all kinds of uh, approaches. Yeah, we have submitted petitions, memorandums. We have gone on the streets many times over, um, and and we we decided after Berse five, we sat down the committee. Um, we di we did discuss. Yeah, what else? What else can we do uh, to actually push for? Um, greater transparency uh, for you know um, an end to the corruption and that time one MDB was a big issue and it doesn't seem as though we are seeing any light yeah in being uh, in getting that uh, issue resolved so we we felt that you know perhaps we could actually bring our issues to Parliament in a sense that it is also the people's issue. Because Berse has always been about the people. Uh, it is a people's movement, yeah. So we are hoping that you know um, our issues get uh, heard in Parliament, even though we were um, we are part of the opposition. That was my thinking. I didn't expect 2018 to happen, the change of government. So therefore, we felt that you know maybe it's time that maybe if we can actually mobilize uh, ten individuals, yeah, from the civil society to stand uh, as candidates. Uh, so we, we, we tried, we tried very hard, but we couldn't get many to come forward to actually be part of this um, uh, camp, uh, the political campaign. Uh, so eventually there's only three of us actually who, come, who came from the civil society. Me, uh, Wong Tang, who led the uh, Himpuna Hijau uh, movement. And then uh, of course uh, Johnson, he's in Johor. He was actually part of um, Shanghai Berse, very active uh, in mobilizing uh, support for Berse at that time. I come from, oh well, my father and mother are great supporters of Barisan National at that time. <laughs> 
So we do have differing views, definitely. But uh, we, we can talk about it. Um, and definitely my father, being a civil servant, yeah, uh, he understands. And um, uh, of course, we, we try to um, do it more amicably mm. so that we don't uh, bang tables you know, during our family dinners. Uh, coming from, uh, well, some of my uncles were actually part of the Nanyang uh, student movement in Singapore. Uh, one of them was actually arrested in Singapore. If I go back a little bit more, during my grandfather's time, it was the Japanese uh, period, and uh, they were actually helping some of the British soldiers, you know, um, hi uh, helping to supply food to them and all that. So. Um, they, they do tell us uh, stories of this nature, but it doesn't really like click in me at that time that, oh, this is something that I want to do. It's only when I went to UK and then coming back, when I have a group of people, that I became much more involved in uh, politics. I think it's still that the clarity of where you stand and what you, um, your views are is very important. Then whether you can implement um, your human rights views, uh, say take for example uh, an issue like the IPCMC. Mm. Yeah? Uh, we want to uh, so-called you know, help to uh, strengthen the police and all that. And we think that that is the, <laughs> the, the, the good issue to take up because it's about the, um, building the integrity of the police force. But it's not shared mm. totally, even not just about um, not being shared by the police, but even the community. Yeah, they feel that, you know, um, IPCMC, then you will uh, uh, tarnish the image of our police officers because you are talking about all the negative things that are happening. So you, you need to start that awareness. La. A lot is really about awareness mm. because um, you may have certain views about how you want to run, uh, even um, take the issue of... Um, I had a, a case of a child child abuse, but the community would would actually protect the family, mm. and rather not blow it up to bring it to the police and to any other agencies. So they will try to help to uh, support the family without resolving the violence aspect. Mm. So then, when you come in, um, you can't really lecture them about the violence. You have to find a way to show to them that, you know, um, yes, we need to give them the emotional support and, and financial or whatever, or the counselling and all that, but we also need to deal with the violence. Ah. So if the guy needs to go to jail, we have to send him to jail. Uh, that, that process takes a long time mm. uh, and sometimes it's not well received. You just have to see how far you can push. Ah. Sometimes you can push quite fast <laughs> but sometimes most of the time you have to yeah. like um, explain uh, and um, talk to them um, I, and I think that that also comes in the issue of say governance yeah we think that um, the council should actually uh, run things um, in a in a much more transparent manner, uh, more accountable and all that, the MPPJ here does to a large extent, where they actually bring in the residents to look at the budget and then give their comments and then critique it. But implementing the budget takes time, and that's where you have to like keep on knocking on doors and and you're wondering how come, yeah, when you have the budget. You, I actually understand why the budget is being used for certain uh, communities or certain um, repairs and all that. Um, it's not coming. Um, you, you have to explain <laughs> to the officers that why the community need this service as soon as possible. Um, so sometimes you, you, you have to be very patient. <laughs> Thank you.
our politicians needs to be diverse themselves. To be <laughs> I think that if you look at uh, the present uh, composition, we don't have an Ora Asli rap. One. Only uh, one which Cameron is... Uh, huh? Ah, uh, yeah. Only um, re, uh, 2019 that he came yeah. in, yeah? 2019. But before him, it's like, you know, we never really had one. Um, so therefore, I, I feel that, that one is the Orasli, the other one is really whether um, the voices of everybody is being captured. La. Like, for example, ref the issue of refugees and migrants is so hard to debate in parliament because uh, you don't have the full support of all the um, MPs. And we also have a minister who doesn't really support uh, migrants and refugees very much. Yeah? No, not much compassion uh, about their health, about their education, about um, the housing and everything else until, you know, uh, until something blow up or somebody die, mm. then they come in uh, temporary with some kind of measure. But uh, I, I feel that, you know, it's important that if we say that we are so-called, yeah, Keluarga Malaysia, uh, we want to be inclusive and all that. Just don't say it, you know, yeah. uh, put it into the implementation, even for the uh, opposition. If we say that we want uh, inclusiveness, uh, that we are diverse and we accept uh, all kinds of opinions and all that, then in our implementation, we have to also do the same. Um, maybe because I always give my opinion, nobody would dare to. <laughs> <laughs> discriminate me. Um, I, I have not actually faced that kind of uh, gender discrimination, not so much. Of course, there are some comments made by MPs and all that. Um, not so much directly to me, but to my colleagues and all that. Of course, we, we start, you know, um, debating and sh screaming at them back in the parliament. But I think it is more in terms of ideas. Yeah, um, I take up issues, uh, and, and also some of the MPs take up issues on uh, race, on um, migrants, on refugees, on IPCMC and all that. Uh, that is where you feel that you, know, um, you don't have full support. It's, it's quite a process to actually explain to um, people that these are also inclusive issues that we need to discuss about. Actually, in our standing order, we do have. It's just that uh, whether the speaker wants to call out or not. So we, we have actually um, made some changes during the pH time in terms of ra racial slurs or abusive kind of words being used, uh, including uh, sexist. But uh, it really comes down to um, the speakers, yeah, whether they want to uh, take action because I, th I feel that if it's repeatedly done and purposely done, even though you reprimand them, um, then there must be a stronger disciplinary extension against uh, MPs. Mm. I don't think there can be a time span over that, yeah, because equality is, f you have to fight for it mm -hmm. all the time, and it changes as, it, as you go along. So. Uh, I wouldn't want to put a time span, but I think that I would like to see uh, more action in terms of promoting that kind of equality. You see, we move from uh, last time when we talk about equality, some quarters will think that, oh, you are actually um, anti-male, <laughs> yeah? or you are anti-Islam, yeah? uh, because you know, uh, how can you talk about being the same? Uh, as bad. But we are not talking about being the same. We are talking about whatever e uh, opportunity that you have, I should also have that same, that uh, equal opportunities. La. So um, it's really about understanding uh, equality and implementing it. Uh, because um, if you don't understand why we need to uh, understand equality, the policies that you make will be very different. So for example, yeah, you can have a general act like, um, okay, we give land rights to everybody. 
uh, which was what happened in Sarawak, land rights to all the, anybody who owns land. So therefore, in implementing, you, you need the landowners to come to the office, which is far away from the, 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 um, the rural areas, to actually sign the documents and all that. So the assumption is that the person knows how to take the transport, uh, knows how to read and know how to write and know how to sign their names. Uh, most of the women couldn't and most of the time they give that right over to their sons, their brothers, their husbands and all that. So in the process, they, did, they don't even realise that they lost the right to their land. So when the, the man actually goes in to sign the document, that document belongs to the, whoever the person signs it. So that kind of equality yeah, uh, is what I'm talking about, where when you actually have a law that is help to protect people's rights, you also need to understand there are layers of discrimination or layers of barriers that you need to take away in order that I or whoever has access to that law or to that policy. So that is um, what I feel that we tend to lack of in terms of policy making. Even tomorrow also can. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, the argument that there are no women is, um, it doesn't hold water anymore. There are lots of women who want to run. It's whether you have the opportunities. That's why you, um, it comes back to equality. You can say that, oh, in our manifesto, yeah, we have, you know, at least 30% and blah, blah, blah. But in the implementation, do you encourage women to be trained? Um, on how to actually do the campaign and uh, work as a ca uh, as a candidate, and give the opportunity not like send most of the women send to uh, contest against giants. Yeah, if, if it's your first time, you stand up, stand to against a giant, uh, which is what happened in Malacca. Yeah, yeah? Um, it doesn't help. Yeah, it doesn't help in building. Uh, towards that um, at least 30% uh, mm. participation. Mm. Oh, definitely. I mean, we have been, uh, under Bursay, we have always been talking about uh, either uh, a mixed proportional representation because it's not just about minority groups, but minority parties. Mm. Because it goes by number of votes. It doesn't go by just crossing over the um, the threshold of plus one yeah. kind of vote, you know. And, and that's where you bring in the diversity. If you include smaller parties, bigger parties, you know, uh, different uh, groups and all that. Um, like in the uh, Philippines, they have the urban farmers, they have the women political party. That, ha that means you, you actually give them the opportunity to actually stand. Whether they win or lose, of course, is decided by the people, but there is an opportunity created. I think that young women, um, looking at how they respond to the recent uh, flood, there are enough of them who wants to actually do something. So uh, I, I feel that like the 18 can actually be the rallying point to actually bring them in, uh, provide them with training, um, the confidence building and all that. Um, I was actually in um, NGO, uh, Empower, where we actually started this political participation training for women. We trained about 800 over women and some of them have actually gone in as uh, councillors, uh, state assembly and one parliamentarian. So there are that, um, if there if people feel that there are institutions or platforms to support them, um, I think that a lot more would want to work, run. I know that in US, there are groups that actually raise funds, yeah? Uh, mm -hmm. All the Emily uh, list, that kind of thing. We can try some of these, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Because the, the barrier with most of the women, one is um, money, Two is really your family. Mm. Because uh, when uh, we were training, that time we were able to have access to even Amno women, uh, training Amno women, MIC. All of them say that we can't even attend a meeting that starts at 8 o'clock. 
because we have to clean and wash and make sure the children goes to sleep before we can actually attend. So by the time we go to the political meeting, it's already 9.30, 10. They, they already made the major decisions and we are like, you know, uh, AOB kind of thing, any other business <laughs> kind of thing. So um, that, that uh, challenge that uh, faced by women needs to be taken care of by political parties because uh, either the political parties um, provide childcare yeah, you bring your children and we will have people to look after so that women candidates can also participate in either the campaign meetings or decision making. That's important. Uh. Um, I guess that uh, we, I mean, you, you're highlighting young women uh, most of the time, but I think uh, young people in general need to be encouraged to actually take up the challenge to uh, be part of the political party process. Yeah? We are all in politics. Uh, the very fact that we are in this country, we are part of the politics. Uh, I, th I think we do need um, new ideas uh, and um, new ways of doing things. And it has to also, not just young people only, but um, to actually uh, work together with people who are, um, for me, uh, genuinely um, believe in you know, promoting human rights democracy in this country. So then we can take this country to a new direction. So, so I think that there are enough young people and also existing uh, people who feel that way and can work together. Whether you stand for election or not, it's, of course it's an individual's uh, decision, but what this country really needs is for us to uh, excite yeah, the general public that there are opportunities and we can actually uh, reformat. Uh, yeah, uh, the system that we have, even though it will take some time, but we can reformat.